Hello everybody, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. So excited to have you here for this wonderful continuation of our breakfast series. Today we are interviewing the lovely Caitlin Allen of Caitlin Allen LLC. Caitlin is a go-to for business owners who need a helping hand in organizing their business. When she's not supporting entrepreneurs, she's out in the Sonoran Desert chasing cacti and scorpions. So hello Caitlin, how are you today? Hey, I am so good. I'm so excited to be here and chatting with you. One of the best uh, conversations I can have. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here today. Yes. So let's kick this off with a very important question. How do you like your pancakes? Oh, so fun fact, four years ago, I was diagnosed with a gluten allergy. So my pancakes have to be gluten free. But I am all about the banana pancake, like pancakes either with banana in it, like a banana egg pancake, which are really super simple to make if you don't have pancake mix at home, um, or pancakes with bananas on top of it. Yes. <laughs> that sounds fantastic and very healthy too. Well, <laughs> then you add the syrup and that's where it gets <laughs> real good, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, of course, definitely. Lots of syrup and butter. Yes. <laughs> so who are you? What makes you, you? Yeah, so I am a business owner of almost, almost four years now. Wow, that's crazy to say. Um, I do business organization, so I help the entrepreneurs that I work with um, organize their businesses, stay organized, and help manage the teams that they work with or the people that they work with um, to help make sure that the team stays streamlined. I also do um, a lot of organization in making sure that their business is set up in a strategic way in the back end, so workflows and processes. Um, I'm also somebody who absolutely loves the desert so like you said before um i live in southern arizona right by the mexico border so i'm always out in the sonoran desert either hiking or just hanging out and of course using a black light to chase scorpions because fun fact scorpions glow under a black light that's crazy i can only imagine what that would look like just lots of little scorpions running around it's pretty insane. <laughs> oh my goodness. So tell us a little bit more about your business. How did this begin? Yeah, so I actually started, um, let's see, so in 2017, I uh, was ending my AmeriCorps term. So I was serving as a uh, AmeriCorps VISTA, which is Domestic Peace Corps. So that's what brought me down here. I'm actually originally from Northern Michigan. Um, and I went to Albion College back in Michigan. So it's a small private liberal arts school that does apply. So keep listening. Um, but I moved out here uh, right after I graduated college to Southern Arizona. Didn't know anyone, didn't know anything. Started AmeriCorps VISTA and I served at the multi-million dollar nonprofit that I worked at for two years, actually. So usually it's only a one-year term. I served two. Um, and there I did a lot of marketing and outreach. I brought people from the tourism industry across Arizona and across southern uh, the southern states here to Ajo to see what we have to offer. And um, what else? So that was like the nonprofit thing. But with AmeriCorps Vista, you only make what the poverty level is set at in your state. So I was only making, I was working from 40 to 50 hours a week and only making $800 at the end of the month. So I was like, okay, what can I do to supplement my income? So my friend Danny Fountain um, at the end of 2016 was like, hey, I need an assistant. Do you want to help me? And I was like, yeah, let's do this. So I started working with her, just doing like some assistant stuff, helping book travel, that type of stuff, um, communication. And then um, I got a few other clients from her that were like, hey, we just need help interfacing with these type of people. And I actually started my business doing a lot of podcasting stuff. So 
Um, if you ever heard of Creative Empire Podcast, I helped a lot with that. Um, and then I kind of helped a lot of other entrepreneurs with their podcasts as well. But then I was kind of just a VA. So I did all of the things because we all do all the things, right? So I started working with different business owners um, and I was doing kind of all of these different things, but figured out if I want to work with someone as a VA and be good at it, we have to have processes because a business owner can't hire someone and then expect them to know what they want right out of the gate. And I think that's why, in my personal opinion, why VAs get such a bad name is because the business owner doesn't know how to own up to the fact that they're not communicating clearly with the VA. So as I've transitioned from VA now to project manager or online business manager or however you wanna call it, um, I've learned that we have to have systems and processes as you're hiring out so that those people can do their jobs well and they have clear expectations on when they need to be done, but what needs to get done. So that's currently what I do now. I mostly work on processes and ops in different businesses that I work for. Very cool. I, uh, I did AmeriCorps for a year myself in college for the scholarship option, so I definitely appreciate the kind of work that goes into that. Oh, AmeriCorps is rough, <laughs> but it's also like one of the best experiences I can like say I've had, and I always tell people if you don't know what you're doing or you really want to get a foot in the door or if you ever want to be a federal employee, doing AmeriCorps is the best because you get that federal non-compete eligibility at the end of your AmeriCorps experience as well. And some portfolio pieces. Mine was 2013, 2014, helped them out with a lot of marketing. It was on Microsoft Publisher, but hey. Oh, oh Publisher. <laughs> Where did you, what type of AmeriCorps did you do? Uh, that was in Wyoming. Um, and for mostly big brothers, big sisters, but I also help them out with a lot of other stuff. Oh, that's awesome. Yay. <laughs> yeah. So very cool. Well, I completely appreciate what you say about business owners, not owning up to being able to communicate well with their assistants. I've certainly been guilty of that and spent a lot of time last year writing processes. So plus one for how important that is to have. So what is one of your favorite memories that you've had? being a business owner so far? Oh man. I think this past year, um, I went from being a VA to more of the ops, like manager role in pretty much all of the businesses that I'm a part of. And I think the major wins have been the growth that I've seen with my businesses. Uh, well, not my businesses, the businesses I work with. Um, I think the growth has been so much fun and all of the major businesses that I work for have seen an exponential growth, which has been super exciting. I think when, as a business owner, you can see the businesses that you work with or you consult with winning, that makes you feel so good and so excited and also makes you be like, okay, so how can I up my game? Because I need to grow with them as well. Um, and so the, the learning that has occurred this past year has been tremendous and just so amazing and so much fun. And so freaking stressful. Like, <laughs> I'm not even going to lie to you. Growth is so scary and so stressful because even if you think you know what's happening, you probably don't know <laughs> absolutely it's kind of a double-edged sword you have a lot of fun and love it but it's also kind of kind of like a roller coaster it's a little bit terrifying at times yes <laughs> very cool well with that same idea in mind what does being a business owner mean to you oh man that's a really good question I think being a business owner is knowing your why behind like why you want to run your business um for me it's all about for me personally in my business it's all about helping other entrepreneurs grow their businesses um something that i've gotten asked quite often is 
are you going to hire a team under you? And my answer has always been no. Um, and I think that's because I am so in the businesses that I work with that I can't imagine handing that off to somebody else. Um, and, oh, it's, some of that freedom and flexibility. Yeah. 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 And the passion about what you do. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I don't know. I think that, that kind of, I hope that answers the question. I don't know. It makes sense to me. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, doing something really for the sake of doing it because you love your work and the people you work with. And yeah. Yeah. So cool. like, it's that it's, it's making sure that you know what you're doing and what your goal is for your business. Um, and then being strategic about building it. So for me, it was, I'm not being strategic about building my business because, well, I am being strategic. I know that I don't want to grow my business and that I really just want to work with the people that I work with, but I want them to grow their, their businesses. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, to me, I guess that's what, being a business owner is, is knowing what you want to be and how you want to grow and also owning up to mistakes and having fun <laughs> and networking, lots of networking. Oh yes. All <laughs> the business cards. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and get into some of the sticky stuff now. What are some of the major challenges in your business you've had to overcome or perhaps you're still working on? Oh yeah. So Actually, right now, um, I've transitioned from VA to mostly project management or um, in all of the business that, businesses that I'm a part of, I'm managing in some capacity. Um, but right now, I am taking an integrator course with Kristen Kaplan. Um, I think it might be renamed to COO course. I don't, I don't know how she's going to rename it, but... Um, Transitioning into the mindset of delegation, I think, especially as a business owner and then as business owners who need managers in their business, knowing when to delegate and being okay with, okay, I'm going to take a cut in hours, but I know that this stuff I shouldn't have on my plate because it's only bogging me down. Um, delegation. So I feel like that's like been the biggest hurdle, um, especially this past year of where do I fit on a team? How do I delegate down and how do I do delegation strategically? So yeah, I think that's been the biggest struggle. Definitely. That is certainly a challenge that I have faced as well. Um, and how's your marketing going? What marketing? <laughs> <laughs> Um, to be honest, so I have never like went out of my way to market that much. Um, most of my marketing has been word of mouth, which I am so appreciative for. I love my people. <laughs> I guess my people love me. Um, it's been really great. But I think the marketing that I have done, um, I have a blog and I have been using Pinterest. And then, of course, I use Instagram. So. Um, I guess a few people have found me on Instagram, which has been really fun. And this year I'm going to get really strategic on my visibility. So doing podcast interviews and hopefully by the end of the year, fingers crossed, I can do a speaking engagement. So that is my goal for 2020 is to speak somewhere. So if you have any speaking opportunities about organizing your business or uh, processes and systems, I... I can fill that gap. <laughs> well, there you go. That's an excellent goal to have. <laughs> well, let's shift gears here a little bit then and talk about some of your first jobs. What were they and have they helped you out to, to be at the point where you're at now? Yeah. So my first job, though I was not paid for it, um, I ran a political campaign to three counties in the state of Michigan when I was a sophomore in high school. And it was the most amazing experience I've ever had. And that 
I think has spurred me to, I wanted to be a lawyer, which is funny. Um, but being a campaign manager made me realize that I loved doing all of the things and organizing all of the things, but I didn't want to be the, the, the talking head. Like I didn't want to be the front person. I'm willing to do all the work, but that's just not me. I don't want to be that visible. So I think that too has been the reason why marketing hasn't been a big thing for me because that's just not, that's not my jam. Um, but yeah, so I, was, I ran three counties in, I don't know if I should get political, in one of the campaigns uh, <laughs> in, what was that, 2008? Yeah. And then, um, then I went to college and at college I did all the things because I was paying for it out of, or I was paying for college. I didn't have, outside of scholarship, I didn't have anybody else helping me pay for college. So there I was a barista and I was a like house manager and I did a lot of different things there. But I think that really taught me how to balance all the things. Um, back in college, I was in a, soror I was in a sorority. I was doing all of the different extracurricular activities you can think of because I thought I was going to law school so I wanted my resume to be literally perfect for some reason I don't know and <laughs> um, just balancing all of those made me realize like look I'm good at making sure that I'm still getting everything done and I can stay super organized and know how to check boxes when they need to be checked so those are my kind of two first jobs and then after that there's a lot of internships so I worked at uh, a nonprofit in southern Lansing where they were working on growing uh, sustainable food in the city which was really cool so they had greenhouses across uh, southern Lansing and then I worked at the health department but I actually worked in the sheriff's department of Jackson County Michigan um, writing evacuation plans if Superfund sites blew up or started on fire. So that was an interesting job too. It's a lot of environmental stuff that I that I worked on. Very cool. What a fun conglomeration of jobs that's brought you to this point. I always love that question because it's so unique what kind of jobs are out there. Yes. <laughs> well, knowing what you know now, what kind of advice would you give somebody who's just getting started or what were some of the things that you wish you knew when you got started? Yeah, so the first thing is hire smart. <laughs> so um, everybody tells you to hire a VA, hire a VA, hire a VA, and I'm not opposed to you hiring a VA, but when you hire a VA, know that like sometimes the responsibility is on you to make sure that that VA knows exactly what they're doing and when things are due um, and that there's a process in place for that person to follow because like that's what a VA is supposed to be doing so hiring strategically um, if that means bringing on a business manager to help write the SOPs first and then hiring to a VA that totally makes sense that's kind of what we're here for um, oh what else the second thing I would say is being quiet and listen. Sometimes you think that you know, have all the right answers because you are, you know, uh, educated in your field, but depending on the niche that you're in, um, just because you think you know something doesn't always mean that you know it, especially with all the different business owners um, in the creative uh, economy or the creative business world. Uh, I mean, you can have a creative business from one of my clients who does live wedding painting to um, another one of my friends who does a marketing agency. And just because they're both creative does not mean that they're going to have the same sort of SOPs or anything like that. So stopping, stopping and listening, but also knowing when to cut out the noise and when to make decisions for yourself. You can only hire so many consultants before you're being told 50 different things and you get super overwhelmed. So knowing and being strategic 
number three, about who you are um, working with and not working with multiple people that are trying to tell you how to do strategy on the same thing. Sure. That's great advice. Absolutely. Well, where can our listeners find you? Yeah. So you can find me at www.caitlin.com or on Instagram, which is where I mostly hang out at C-A-I-T-M-A-L-L-E-N, Kate M. Allen. Um, And I would love to talk to you. So feel free to shoot me a DM. And if you want business organization tips or anything like that, that's where you can find me. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being here. And thank you to all of our listeners for tuning in. This has been Caitlin of Caitlin Allen, LLC. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye, guys.